Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're doing well. This is Jack from Byprogrammers.com and welcome back to a brand new episode of Let's Code React Native. In this episode, we are going to build a clean looking digital wallet app based on the design created by Happy Tree Malerta on Jibbo.com. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification for more videos like this. All right, now with that being said, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is to create a project and stamp the project structure like we always did in the previous videos. So open up your terminal and type react native in it. I'm gonna call this digital wallet app. Alright, now let me just rearrange my project structure a little bit. I'm gonna just copy everything and paste it in the root folder. And I'm gonna get rid of this empty folder over here. Now in the root directory, I'm going to create a folder called assets where I'm going to copy and paste all the assets I'll be using in this project. So we have images, we have icons as well as fonts. So copy folders. All right. Next, we need to create a React Native config file in the root folder, in the root directory, sorry, react-native.config.js. So within this um, config file, we need to write module.exports goes to project iOS Android and we need to add the assets. We need The reason why we need to include this config file is because we need to install the fonts into our respective um, project iOS and Android. All right. Okay. Next, we need to create a folder called constants, and within this folder, we will create a few um, files, which are icons.js, images.js, team.js, as well as index.js. So the reason why we are creating this constants folder is because it's it will be easier for us to reference the icons and images later on in the project. All right? And we will be will also be including all the themes that we'll be using over here. All right? So let's start with the icons.js. So I'm going to type constant back. All right? As you can see, I have let me just hide the terminal. All right, so I have um, added the reference for all the icons that I've added in in the assets folder. All right, so next we'll move on to the images.js. All right, so Wally logo. There you go. These are basically the reference for the images that we have added in just now. All right, let me just save the icons file. And lastly, we'll be heading to the team.js. All right. So import dimensions. All right, so as you can see here, we have included the colors, the sizes, as well as the fonts that we'll be using in the project later on. All right, so save the file. All right, next we'll need to create the screens folder. All right, so create a new folder and we name it as screens. So as you can see from the mock, let me just um, open this open this up. All right. So as you can see from the mock, we have three different screens, right? We have the sign up screen, then we have the home screen, and lastly, we have the scan screen, right? So let's head back to create these screens. So first thing first, we have the sign up screen. We have the home screen. We have the, oops, all right, so we have the scan screen. And of course, we also need to include the index.js file. All right, so I'm gonna start off with signup.js. 
so import react from react I'm going to import a couple of components that I'll be using okay from react native and I'll be creating a sign up functional component and we need to export the component all right I'm going to just copy and paste it in the home.js and change this to home. I'm going to repeat the same step on the scan.js like that. And lastly, we need to reference these screens in the index.js file. So import home from home, import scan from scan import sign up from sign up I'm gonna export all these components all the screens all right now that we have the basic structure ready we have created the assets folder we have created the constants folder and also we have created the screens folder now what I'm going to do next is that I will install a library called react navigation all right don't worry about this. I'm going to um, include all this in the block, byprogrammers.com block. All right, so don't worry about this. All right, now I'll need to install the bottom tabs. Well, actually, I can install the React Navigation Library all at once like this. Next, we'll need to make some changes on our app.js file. All right, so I'm going to remove everything from here to here all right I'm gonna get rid of Vodos and well you know what I'm gonna um, delete this as well and here I'll create the app functional component and I'll return something right so here I'll need to import a couple of components so um, I need to import from react navigation stack all right so here it will be create stack navigator and i'll need to import from react navigation native and here it will be navigation controller uh, sorry navigation container and default team all right, so here I will need to import the sign up screen. Sign up, all right. Okay, so next we'll need to create the team variable. So default team colors will be default team dot colors and border is going to be transparent okay let me just hide the terminal and change the spaces to four all right so next we'll create the stack navigator so equals to create stack navigator and here we'll need to return navigation container there'll be a team prop which we will pass in the team variable and here stack.navigator so we need to add in a couple of uh, props for this navigator so screen options is equals to I do not want the header so header shown false alright so here it's going to be stack.screen and the first screen is going to be sign up all right oops and the component will be sign up and here we need to add in another prop called initial route name so that it will load 
sorry, it will show the sign up screen on first load. All right. So what I'm going to do now is that I will try to run the app and see if it works. But before I can do that, I'll need to run react native link and I'll cd into iOS and run pod install. All right, once the pod install is completed, I'll navigate back to the root folder and run react native run iOS. All right, so it's working. The sign up screen is being loaded, right? So next, I will first draw the screen for um, sign up screen before we head over to the home and um, scan screen. All right, so for the sign up screen, we have the sign up back button, we have the logo, we have the form input, and lastly, we have the continue button. All right, so let's, let's see how we can do this. Now I'll first import a couple more components that I'll be using in this screen. So I need a touchable opacity. I need touchable without feedback. I need image, I need text input. I need model, I need flat list, I need keyboard avoiding view. And lastly, I need scroll view. I am going to import from a constant file as well. All right, so import from constants. And here it's going to be colors, sizes, let me see. Oh, I need to, I forgot to include the index.js file for constants. So what I need to do is basically to import everything from icons, images, as well as the team.js file. All right, so import icons from icons, import images from images, import team from team. I'm gonna import a couple, couple more components. Um, I need colors, sizes, fonts. And now I can then export all of them, right? So I export icons, images, team, colors, sizes and fonts all right so i'm gonna head over to sign up um, screen and here i can now import them all right so icons images fonts all right now, I'm not sure if you have noticed about this or no. If you look at the mark, there is actually a, a very subtle um, gradient color in, in the background, right? There's a very subtle gradient color in the background. So in order to achieve this result, we need to install a library called React Native Linear Gradient. So scroll down and copy npm install. You can use yarn if you want to and paste it in your terminal. All right, so every time I re uh, sorry, every time I install a new library, I will restart the app just in case, you know, it doesn't install properly or anything like that happens. All right, so I'm going to run link, React Native link. I'm going to cd into iOS and run pod install. All right, now I'm going to cd back to the root directory and run React Native run iOS to restart the app. Oh, I think this is because I forgot to include the US flag, the dummy image, right? So I'm going to include the US flag in the images folder. All right. Now, when I try to restart it, it should work. All right, great. It's working now. So what I'll be doing now is that I will import linear gradient from React Native Linear Gradient, which is the library that we have just installed, all right? So um, I am going to use the um, keyboard avoiding view. I'm 
I'm going to include some props as well. The behavior equals to platform dot OS equals to iOS. Then I will use padding. If not, I'll just keep it at keep it as null. All right. So the style is going to be flex one. So within this keyboard avoiding view, we are going to create the linear gradient component, which basically creates the um, gradient background. So for the linear gradient, we need some props as well. The colors is going to be colors.line and colors.emerald. And the style is going to be flex one as well. And let's see if it works. All right, cool. Now let's take a look at the mock. The first thing we'll be doing is the header, right? The back button over here. So I am going to wrap all the all the um, components within the screen inside the scroll view. So the first component that I'll be rendering is the header section. So I'll need to create the header function over here. Render header and I'll return something, right? So here we will return a touchable opacity. I'm going to give it some styling. Flex direction goes to row, align items equals to center, margin top equals to sizes dot padding times six, padding horizontal equals to sizes dot padding times two. Whenever I click on this um, button, I am going to console log sign up all right so within this button within this touch bolt opacity we need a view well actually i think we can just include the image because we need the um back arrow image so image source is going to be icons dot back resize mod is going to be contain style is going to be with 20 let me just hide the terminal all right height 20 and tint color it's going to be white let's see all right so we have the back button over here back icon over here next we need to render a text which says sign up right Alright, I'm gonna give it some styling. Margin left sizes dot padding times 1.5. Color it goes to white. And the font is going to be H4. A lot better now. Alright, so the header section is now ready. Next we'll be working on the um, logo section, right? So to do that, we need to create a new render function called render logo right and i'm going to create this function over here and i'm going to return something so here i'm going to return a view with some styling of course margin top sizes dot padding times three sorry times five height equals to 100 align item equals to center justify content equals to center and within this view i'm going to have the image component right so image source will be images dot valley logo resize mode is contain and style is going to be with 60 percent let's see all right great now that the logo is in place, next we'll be working on the 
form input, right? So we have full name, font number. This one is slightly complicated because we have the country code over here. Later on, we'll be using a model that allows the um, user to select the country code. And lastly, we have the password text input with the visibility toggle button over here, right? So to do that, we need to create a new render function called render form, right? And I'm going to create this function over here. Function, render form, and return something. So here, first thing first, I need a view with some styling. Margin top sizes dot padding times three margin horizontal sizes dot padding times three as well so within this view component this container view actually we have full name right the first the first um, um, form input is actually full name all right so here I'll create a view style is going to be margin top sizes dot padding times three and we have the tags that says full name I need to add some styling for this as well so the sorry the color is going to be colors dot light green and the font is going to be fonts dot body tree so we have the full name label over here then we need the text input right so we need to add some style for this as well margin vertical sizes dot padding border bottom color equals to white border bottom width equals to one height equals to 40 color equals to white and lastly the fonts is going to be body tree we need to add a couple more props over here so we have placeholder enter full name and the placeholder text color is going to be colors dot white and the selection color is going to be colors of white as well right there you go it's working let me just open up the keyboard yep like that okay so after the full name text input we have a font number right so here we have font number I'm gonna create a container view for this as well and the style is going to be margin top sizes dot padding times two and we need a text component that says font number I'm, I'm gonna add a bit of styling for this style equals to colors sorry color colors dot light green and the fonts will be body tree so after this we need another view with some styling that says that up uh, sorry flex direction equals to row and here we have the area code or, or maybe country code right so I'm gonna call this um, country code so it's going to be a button it's a touchable opacity I'm gonna give it some styling as well width equals to 100 height equals to 50 margin horizontal equals to 5 border bottom color equals to white border bottom width equals to one flex direction equals to row and lastly the fonts is going to be fonts dot body sorry two yeah so whenever i press on this button actually i need to 
show model, which I'm going to do it later, right? So within this button, within this touch pole opacity, we need a view with some styling, justify content center. And within this view, we have an image. It's actually this um, down arrow image over here. So image source equals to icons down. And the style is going to be width equals to 10, height equals to 10, and tint color equals to white. Like that. All right, so next we need to show the, um, let me see. We need to show the country flag, right? So here I'll create another view with some styling. Um, justify content, it goes to center. Margin left equals to five. And this one is going to be the country flag image. But for now, I'm going to use the US flag. It's actually a dummy flag image for now. Later on, we'll use the fetch API to fetch the proper data from um, some some services, all right? So the source is going to be images.us flag, right? This is just a dummy data. And the resize mode is going to be contain. Style is going to be width 30, height 30. All right, there you go. The flag is showing here, right? And lastly, we need the country code. So I'm gonna create another view. And here I'm gonna give it some styling. Justify content equals to center, margin left equals to five. And here we need a text component that says um, that show the country code, right? Which is I'm gonna give it like um US plus one. Right. Here I'm going to give it some styling. So color is going to be white and the font style is going to be body tree. Perfect. Next, we'll need to render the font number input. So I'm gonna do it over here, font number. All right, so here we need a text input. Give it some styling. Flex one, margin vertical equals to sizes dot padding, border bottom color equals to colors dot white, border bottom width equals to one, height equals to forty, color equals to white, and the font is going to be body tree, right? Here we're gonna add in a couple more props. The placeholder is going to be enter font number placeholder text color is going to be white selection color is going to be white as well. Perfect. Okay. Now that we have the font number text input ready, next we'll be working on the password text input, right? So over here, it's going to be password. And I'll be creating a container view for this text input. Same thing, I'm gonna give it some styling. Margin top equals to sizes dot padding times two. And within this view, within this container view, we have the text that says password. Like that. All right, gonna give it some styling. Color, colors dot light green. And the font, it's going to be body tree. All 
right? Now we need to create the um, text input, right? So text input. We need some styling as well. So margin vertical equals to sizes dot padding. Border bottom color equals to colors dot white. Border bottom width equals to one. Height equals to forty. Color equals to white. And lastly, the font style is going to be body tree. All right. As usual, we need a couple more props for this text input. Um. So the placeholder is going to be sorry. The placeholder is going to be enter password. The placeholder text color is going to be white. Selection color is going to be white as well. And we need a new props over here, which is the secure text entry. For now, I'm going to hard code it to true first. Later on, we'll create the toggle button over here, right? Okay. Oh, sorry, a bit of typo over here. Style. Yep, correct. Now we need to create the toggle button over here. So after the text input, we need a touchable opacity. Give it some styling. Position. Absolute, right zero, bottom 10, height 30, width, it's going to be 30 as well. So whenever I click on this button, by right, I should toggle the password visibility. But for now, I'm going to just console log that says toggle, right? So within this touchable opacity, we will have the image component source is going to be icons.i style is going to be height 20 width 20 tint color is going to be white yep like that all right so after the form inputs we need to render the continue button right so to do that we need to create a new function called render button and I'm going to create the new function over here function render button and I'm going to return something so here we need a container view with some styling margin equals to sizes dot paving times three and within this container view we need the touch opacity component right I'm gonna give it some styling as well Height equals to 60. Background color equals to black. Border radius equals to sizes that radius divided by 1.5. Align item equals to center. Justify content equals to center. So whenever I click on this, by right i should navigate to the home screen but for now i'm gonna just say navigate to home i'm gonna just um console log navigation sorry navigate to home on the terminal right so within this touch opacity we need the text itself which says continue oh i need to add a bit of styling for this color equals to white and font equals to hatch sheet. Perfect. Now before, let me just close this. Before we move on to the next screen, which is the home screen, there are actually two more things we need to do here. The first one is actually the font number country code selection, which basically we will show a model, all right? And the next one is actually the password toggle visibility uh, feature. So we'll work on this first, then we'll move on to the font country code selection, right? So to work on the password visibility button, we need to first 
add a new react state hook right so here constant i'm gonna create show password state all right so set show password and here is going to be react.use state and the initial state is going to be false so now i need to navigate to the form and for the password text input which is this one all right so the secure text entry is no longer going to be hard coded to true i'm going to use the state that we have just created right which is show password so whenever i click on this button instead of just you know console lock toggle on the screen on the terminal i am going to set show password to inverted of show password all right and lastly we need to work on the icons as well so if show password equals to true then i will use the icons.disable i icon yeah that one if not i'll just stick to i now let's see if it works so initially the secure text entry is true if i click on this toggle button it should change it to false like that right if you look at the icons it's changing as well perfect all right now that the password toggle visibility button is done next we'll move on to the country code selection button right so before we can do that we need to create a few um, react state hooks all right so i need the areas and the initial state is going to be an empty array i need the selected area and the initial state is going to be now and lastly i need a flag to toggle the model visibility so it's going to be model visible set model visible it goes to react.use state it goes to i mean the initial state is going to be false all right okay now because there are a lot of country codes to be included it's really hard for us to type in manually fortunately we have a service called rest countries that we can call to retrieve a least of country codes all right the endpoint that we'll be using is the all endpoint which is this one you can copy the link and see let me see all right internet is a bit slow there you go so if you if you take a look at the json object we have the country name we have the country code we have the calling codes which is basically all the information that we need all right so let's get back to the let's get back to our code and here we need to use the use effect hook all right so i'm gonna type in react.use effect all right this is a use effect hook so here within this use effect hook i am going to use the fetch api to get the a list of um, country codes as well as the other relevant information from the rest countries um, service right so fetch https rest countries dot eu slash rest slash v2 slash all right so then response response dot json then data over here all right let's see what we have here right so i'm going to console log data sorry There you go, we got all the information that we need from the rest country service. All right, so now what we can do is that we can use the map method. All right, area data equals to data.map. I'm going to use the map method to get the information that I'm interested in from the JSON object, right? So item 
I'm going to return some information. All right, so the code is going to be item alpha two code. Name is going to be item name. Calling card is going to be plus. Sorry. Item dot calling cards zero okay and lastly we also need the flag property all right so for this flag property even though the rest country service is giving us the flag image but it's in SVG format so since it's in SVG format it's kind of hard for us to use it in our project because it's not easy to you know display SVG in React Native. It's possible, but it's quite complicated. So to reduce the complexity of this project, we are going to use another service called country flex just to get the country flag, right? So we can copy the link over here. This is actually the, the link that you can use to get the country flag, right? So I'm going to paste the link over here. I'm going to change this to the country code that we have. All right, so item dot alpha to code. And the style is going to be flat and the size is going to be 64 all right so now we have all the information ready next we'll set it to our state all right so set areas area data and if um, the area data has data all right, so if the if the length is more than zero, then I'll give it a default data. So area data dot filter a a dot card equals to US. The US country code is going to be the default data. All right, so if default data dot length is more than zero, then I'll set the selected area to default data cool now I'll navigate to the font number section over here and I am going to change the dummy image flag uh, sorry dummy country flag to the one we have um, pulled from the service right so we need to change this to URI selected area dot flag that's kind of weird let me see what's happening oh I think I forgot an s here all right so it's calling cuts all right it's working the flag is showing and now I need to change the country code right so I'm gonna navigate back to the font number section and the country code is going to be selected area dot calling code all right perfect all right so next what we need to do is that whenever we click on this button over here we need to show a model with a list of country codes for user to select right so i'm going to look for the area code touchable opacity the country code touchable opacity over here instead of just you know console log i need to change this to set model visible equals to true and here i need to create a new model sorry a new function all right at the outer layer i'm going to create a new function called render area quotes model and i'm going to create this new function over here function render area codes model and I'm going to return something all right so here I'm going to return a model and within this model we need to give it a um, some props animation type it goes to slide transparent it goes to true visible it goes to model visible and here I'll be using the touchable without feedback component.
And whenever I click on it, I will set the model to false, model visible to false, right? Okay, so within this touchable without feedback component, we need to have a container view. And I'm going to give it some styling. Flex one, align item, center, justify, content, center. And within this view, we need to have another view with some styling as well. Height equals to 400, width equals to sizes dot width times 0 0.8. Background color is going to be colors dot light green. Border radius equals to sizes dot radius. Okay, yep, perfect. Now within this view, we will be creating, I mean, we'll be using the flat list to show all the country codes, right? So flat list data equals to areas, render item equals to render item. I'm going to create this function later on. Key extractor equals to item, item cut shows vertical scroll indicator equals to false and style equals to padding sizes dot padding times two and margin bottom equals to sizes dot padding times two and here I'll need to create the render item function right so constant render item all right i'm going to return something so here i'll be returning the touch opacity give it some styling padding sizes dot padding flex direction equals to row on press whenever I click on it I will set the selected area it goes to item and I'm going to set the model visible to false all right so within this button we will be showing the country image so source equals to URI item dot flag and style equals to width 30 height 30 margin right 10 and after this image we need a text component that's that um show the item name or basically the country name all right so style is going to be fonts body four right let's see sorry some typo over here should be flag not flat yep now the flag is showing yep perfect so whenever I click on this whenever I choose a, a country let's say Argentina the flag will be showing here and the country code will be showing here perfect all right now that the sign up screen is completed next we'll move on to the home and scan screen right but before we can um work on the screen itself we need to work on the bottom tab navigation or bottom tab bar if you pay close attention to the bottom tab uh, bottom tab bar is actually very very similar to the one we did in the previous episode for that reason i will not be spending a lot of time to explain um, the bottom tab bar later on as i have already explained in the previous episode all right so let's head back to our code and the first thing we need to do is to create a folder called navigation and within this folder we need to create a file called tabs.js so here we need to import a couple of things so import react from react import from 
reignite this. I need view, image, touchable, opacity, and style sheet. Right? And here I need to import from React Navigation bottom tabs. I need to import create bottom tab navigator and bottom tab bar. And now I need to import the screens, right? So I need to import from screens. I need to import the home and scan screen. And also I need to import from the constants as well. And in order to achieve this result, um, this curvy shape over here, we need to install a library called react-native-svg, right? So scroll down and um, yep, look for this. So we just need to install, open up your terminal and npm install react-native dash svg you can use yarn as well if you want to other than that we also need another library called react native iphone x helper so copy this oops and paste it in your terminal and as usual every time i, in, I install a new package or a new library i am going to restart the app so react native link cd into ios and run pod install Navigate back to the root directory and run react native run iOS. Alright, so now we can import SVG and path from react native SVG. And we can also import from react native iPhone X helper this iPhone X all right let me just hide the terminal and here we can create the bottom tab navigator and assign it to a variable called tab all right so create bottom tab navigator and here we are going to create another functional component called tabs all right it's a functional component and I'm going to return something and here I'm going to export default tabs. So here we need to return tab.navigator and within this tab.navigator we need to include the tab.screen. Alright, so here we need to include some props. Um, name equals to home because we have three different tabs over here. Alright, so we have home, we have scan and we have profile, right? So name equals to home, component equals to home as well. And um, I am going to keep it like this for now. We have three different tabs, so we need to copy and paste for three times, two times, sorry. And the second tab is going to be scan, component is going to be scan, and the third tab is going to be user. But the component, I'm going to keep it as um, home. All right, I'm going to save it and I'm going to include the tab in the app.js file. All right, so over here, I am going to import tabs from navigation tabs. And here underneath the sign up stack.screen, I am going to create the tabs. All right, so stack.screen name equals to home and component equals to tabs all right now to see if it works we are going to navigate back to the sign up um, screen and head over to the button function and once i click on this button i need to navigate to home right so navigation dot navigate sorry i think i need to include it over here yep so i need to include navigation over here 
need to remove this. All right, so navigation, navigate, home. Let's see if it works. All right, cool, it works. We have three um, tabs over here, right? So home, scan, and user. All right, so next we'll need to add the tab bar icon. So to do that, we need to navigate back to tabs.js and within the tab.screen component, we will need to add a new props called options, right? So option tab bar icon focus return image. This is going to be the tab bar icon, right? So source icons dot more resize mode equals to contain style equals to width 25 height 25 and tint color equals to focus if it's focus it's going to be white and if it's not it's going to be secondary right okay it's right here so i'm going to copy and paste this options prop into the other tabs as well and i'm going to change the image so this one's going to be scan this one this one's going to be user like that all right next thing i want to do is that i want to remove the label and i want to remove the background color as well so um to do that we need to add in some props for the tab.navigator so tab bar options equals to show label equals to false style equals to sorry position absolute bottom zero left zero right zero background color transparent and elevation equals to zero all right so as you can see it's transparent and the label is gone right now what we need to do next is that we need to create a customized version of tab bar button right whenever i click on the tab bar it should float up like this so to do that head over to your tab within the options prop we need to include the tab bar button as well so tab bar button props return tab bar custom button don't worry we are going to create this later on and i'm going to copy and paste it into the other tabs as well all right now we need to create the tab bar custom uh, button function right so we can do it over here so constant tab bar custom button and here we have accessibility label accessibility state children and on press Right, and here I will return something and um, all right so if the tab is being selected by using the accessibility um, state dot selected if it's selected I will return something and if it's not I'll return another um, UI, right? So if the bottom tab is being selected, I will return a container view with some styling, align item, center, and I need another view with some styling as well. Flex direction equals to roll position absolute top zero 
and within this view I will need two empty views all right I need two empty views with the style of flex one and background color equals to white same goes for this I need two and within I mean in between these two empty views I will be creating the SVG the curve right the curve over here so SVG SVG with some props so width equals to 75 height equals to 61 and view box equals to 0 0 75 and 61 and within this SVG we will need to include the path all right don't worry I have included this in the um, by programmers block so you can copy and paste from there if you want to follow along all right so if I save oops um, let me just finish it here we need a touchable opacity touchable opacity with some styling top negative 22.5 justify content center align item center with 50 height 50 border radius 25 background color equals to colors dot primary and style here I need to include the shadows All right so I'm gonna include shadows over here so let me add the shadow style first so constant styles equals to style sheet dot create shadow shadow color colors dot primary shadow offset width 0 height 10 shadow opacity 0 0.25 shadow radius 3.84 elevation 5 all right so we need the on press props as well so on press equals to on press and within this touchable opacity I'll render the children right and if it's not being selected, I will render a touchable opacity with some styling. Flex equals to 1. Justify content equals to center. Align items equals to center. Width equals to 50. Height equals to 50. Background color equals to white and we need active opacity equals to one on press equals to on press and within this touchable opacity i'm going to render the children well let's see if it works perfect perfect all right now in order to make sure the bottom tab bar fill up the um, empty spaces over here we need a custom tab bar all right so to do that in the tab dot navigator we need another props called tab bar all right so props I'm going to return something and it's going to be custom tab bar which we are going to create shortly all right so props equals to props all right, so now I'm going to create the tab bar, custom tab bar. So here, constant custom tab bar equals to props. It's a functional component. And if it's I is iPhone X, then I'm going to return something. If it's not, I'm going to return something else, all right? So if it's iPhone X, I'm going to return a container view. Within this view, we will have a view with some styling. So position 
absolute bottom zero left zero right zero height 30 background color equals to white and underneath this I will render the bottom tab bar all right So if it's not iPhone X, I will just render the bottom tab bar like that. Cool. No, wait, it's not working. Let me see what's happening. Um, the reason why it's not working, the reason why the white um, background is not filling up the empty spaces over here, it's because of a typo over here. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, so right, zero. Now it works. All right now it works perfectly fine. Alright, now that the bottom tab bar is completed, next we'll be working on the home screen. Normally when we encounter a screen like this, we will wrap everything, all the components within the scroll view, and within the scroll view we, we are going to have a flat list over here for the features, and we are going to have another flat list for the special promo, right? However, if you were to use this approach, we are going to get a warning that says virtualized list should never be nested inside plain scroll views. So in order to get rid of that warning, we are going to first create a flat list for the special promo section, and then we'll be using one of the flat list props called list header component for the other components over here, which includes the you know, header component, the banner, as well as the features, all right? Let's see how we can do this. All right, so first thing first, navigate to your home.js file, and here I'm going to include all the components that I'll be using later on. So I need safe area view. I need view, I need text, I need image, I need flat list, and I need touchable opacity, right? And now I'm going to import all the constants that we need as well. So import from constants, right? And here it's going to be colors, sizes, icons, um, I need fonts, icons, and images, right? So what we'll be doing next is that we'll be creating a bunch of dummy datas. First, we need the features data, which is basically this part over here, all the features, right? So there you go. We have the dummy data for features, all right? So we have um, top up, transfer, internet, wallet, bill, games, mobile prepaid, and more, right? And next, we need to have another set of dummy data for the special promo. So I'm going to come over here and do the same thing for special promo. All right, so we have bonus, ca sorry, bonus cashback one, two, three, and four. Once we got that, we need to set, set it into our React state hook, right? So constant features set features equals to react.use state features data and um, this one's going to be going to be special promo set special promos equals to react.use state special promo data all right like I said this time it's going to be a little bit different all right, instead of working on the header part first, we are going to work on the special promo first. So we are going to create a flat list for the special promo. So over here, I'll first create a safe area view. And within, I'll give it some styling as well. And within this safe area view, we are going to create a new function called render promos right so I'm going to create a function over here and return something so here we are going to return a flat list and within this flat list um, we are going to give it some styling so content container style padding horizontal equals to sizes dot padding times three we need to set the number of columns equals to two as you can see here we have two columns right next we need to set the column wrapper style 
equals to justify content space between the data is going to be special promos key extractor is going to be item item dot id render item is going to be the render item function which we are going to create later on shows vertical scroll indicator is going to be false all right and now we need to create the render item function over here so render item equals to item arrow function and I'm going to return a touchable opacity give it some styling margin vertical equals to sizes dot base width equals to sizes dot width divided by 2.5 and whenever I click on the promo I am going to console log the um, item title all right so within this touchable opacity we are going to have a view give it some styling height equals to 80 border top left radius equals to 20 border top right radius equals to 20 as well and the background color is going to be colors.primary this is actually the container view for the um, promo banner all right so over here within this container view we will have the image component and the source is going to be images dot promo banner resize mode equals to cover style is going to be with 100 percent height 100 percent um, border top left radius equals to 20 border top right radius equals to 20 as well let's see what we got here all right so we have the promo banner ready next we'll need to render the title as well as the description all right so over here we need another container view let me scroll down a little bit all right give it some styling padding sizes dot padding background color equals to colors dot light gray border bottom left radius equals to 20 border bottom right radius equals to 20 as well and within this view we are going to render two text components which are the item title as well as the item dot description all right now we just need to give it some styling so style equals to fonts h4 and this one is going to be fonts body 4 perfect all right now that we have already set up the special promo flat list next we'll be working on the header component all right so first thing first i'm going to create an arrow function for the header component over here so i'm going to call this header component return a view and within this view i'm going to render a function called render header and i'm going to create the um, function over here function render header return something all right now i'm going to set the list header component props for this flat list over here list header component props and set it to header component that we have just created over here all right so let's see what will happen as you can see the text is being rendered over here as the header so next we can work on the header component in the render header function all right so here we need a view we need a container view and give it some styling so 
So flex direction equals to row, margin vertical equals to sizes dot padding times two. And within this view, we are going to have another view with a styling of flex equals to one. And within this view, we have two text components over here. All right, so two text component, we have hello and the name. I'm going to put by programmers, give it some styling. This one's going to be H1, sorry, H1. And this one's going to be body two and the color body two and the color is going to be colors dot great perfect all right so after this we need another view over here we need another view and give it some styling align items equals to center justify content equals to center And within this view, we have the touch bolt opacity. This one, all right. So we have the touch bolt opacity. Give it some styling. So height will be 40, width will be 40, justify content center, align item center, and background color is going to be colors dot light gray. All right, now within this touch bolt opacity, we are going to render the bell icon. So we need image component over here. Source will be icons dot bell. And style equals to width twenty, height twenty, and the tint color is going to be colors dot secondary. There you go, the bell icon is over here. And lastly, we'll need to render the red dots over here. So underneath the image component, we are going to create a new view, all right? So within this view, we need to give it some styling. Position will be absolute, top will be negative five, right will be negative five, Height will be 10, width will be 10, background color, it's going to be red, and border radius will be 5. Perfect. Alright, now that we have rendered the header, next we'll be rendering the um, banner. To do that, um, come over here the header component and we are going to create a new function called render banner and This function is going to be created over here. So function render banner and here I'll be returning something right so I'm going to return a view Give it some styling Height equals to 120, border radius equals to 20, background color equals to colors dot primary. Well, actually, I don't think I need the background color, so I'm gonna just ignore that for now. And within this view, I'm going to um, include the image component. Source will be images dot banner. Resize mode is equal equals to cover. Style is, cool, is going to be with 100%, height 100%, and border radius equals to 20. Let's see. Perfect. I'm going to just remove this. All right. Now that the banner is ready, next we'll be working on the features section. So scroll down to the render promos function and underneath the render banner um, function, we are going to create a new function called render features. 
and this function will be created over here. So function render features and here we're going to return something. So to render all the features over here, we are going to use a flat list. All right, so return flat list. The data is going to be features. Num columns will be four. Column wrapper style will be justify content space between. Key extractor is going to be item. Item.id. Render item is going to be render item, which we are going to create later. And style is going to be margin top sizes that padding times two. All right, and we are going to use the list header component for the um, features label. All right, so over here it goes to header, and I'm going to create the header over here. All right, so constant header return a view with some styling all right so margin bottom is going to be sizes dot padding times two and within this view we will render a text component that says features give it some styling as well this one is going to be fonts h3 all right so next we need to work on the render item so constant render item equals to item arrow function and return something so here we're going to return a touchable opacity give it some styling margin bottom equals to sizes dot padding times two width equals to 60 align item center I'm press which means whenever I press on this whenever I press on any of these features I'm going to um, console lock the description like that so within this touchable opacity we're going to render a view give it some styling so height equals to 50 width equals to 50 margin bottom equals to 5 Border radius equals to 20. <coughs> Excuse me. Background color equals to item dot background color. Align items equals to center. Justify content equals to center as well. All right. Let me see what we have here. Okay. Cool. We have the um, background color ready. Next, we're going to render the image within this view. So image source will be item dot icon resize mode is going to be contain and style will be um, height 20 width 20 tint color equals to item dot color perfect and lastly, we need to render a text component underneath the um, images. All right, so over here, we are going to render a text component that says um, item description. Give it some styling. Text align equals to center. Flex wrap equals to wrap. And the font will be body four. Sweet. Last but not least, we'll need to render the um, header section for the special promo. All right, we need to render. Sorry, we need to render this label as well as this view all button. All right. So to do that, we will head over to the render promo function over here. We will create a new function called render promo header. All right. So we can create this function over here. So render promo header. And I'm going to return a view with some styling. So flex direction equals to row and margin bottom equals to sizes dot padding. 
So within this view, we will have a container view for the text component. All right, so, oops. All right, the style is going to be flex one. And within this view, we will render the text component that says special promos. And the style is going to be fonts H3. All right, so over here, and next we need to render the button. So over here, we will have touchable opacity. Give it some, I don't think, I don't think we need styling for this. So whenever I press on the view O button, we will console log view all. So within this button, sorry, within this touchable opacity, we will render the text component that says view all. Give it some styling as well. So um, color color is going to be colors dot gray, and the fonts fonts will be body four. Perfect. Notice that some of the items of special promos are being blocked by the bottom tab bar. So to solve that, we need to come over to the flat list and add a new prop called a list footer component and here we will return a view actually we will render a view an empty view with a style of margin bottom 80 to push everything up by 80 pixel right all right cool it works now all right, so we have completed the home screen and next we'll be working on the scan screen. So for the scan screen, we are going to have a camera view that covers the entire area. And within the camera view, we are going to have a header section that includes a close button, a label, and also another info button over here. Other than that, we will also be working on the um, another section on another section at the bottom of the screen that includes, you know, a label, and also two buttons over here. So to work on this screen, the first thing we need is to install a library called React Native Camera. So scroll down to the bottom of this page and look for the installation requirements. Open it up and here scroll down and you can see the installation instructions. So just copy and paste this in your terminal like that. As usual, every time we install a new library, we are going to restart the app. Alright, so close that. And I'm going to run React Native Link. I'm going to cd into iOS and run pod install. Alright, so now we get back to the root directory. And now, before we can use the um, React Native Camera uh, Library, we need to do some configurations, alright? So, scroll down. And here you can see for iOS projects, you will need to add some permissions in the info.plist file. And for Android, if you're working on Android, then you will need to add the permission in your Android manifest.xml file. Basically, you just need to follow the steps over here and you can pretty much start using the library. All right, so since we are working on iOS in this video, I'm gonna follow the steps. And since for this project, for the scan screen, we only need to access to the camera to scan a barcode so for that reason, we only need this um, this permission and as camera usage description. So there are two ways you can do this. There are two ways you can include this. The first way is actually to navigate to your iOS folder, your project folder, and open up your info.plist file and you can include it here. All right. So just copy and paste this thing, your key and your string, basically the message that you that um, the iOS device will be showing to the user for the first time before uh, the user access to the camera, right? But in this video, we are going to tag a longer route by using the Xcode itself, all right? So navigate to your source code iOS folder and open up the XC workspace file, all right? So navigate to your project, head over to the info tab, and here you can add a new key, privacy, let me see. Um, it should be privacy camera usage description, all right, this one. And for the value, I think it's because my, 
laptop is currently running a lot of programs that's why my xcode is not really responding that's all right i'm going to close this xcode that's all right and i'm going to add the key in the info.plist file over here Right, so I'm gonna scroll to the bottom and I'm gonna add it over here. Let me see if Xcode has already added for me. All right, there you go. Xcode has already added the NS camera usage description key for me. All right, so here for the message, for the value, I'm gonna type digital wallet app needs camera to scan QR codes. All right, save it. And now I think we should be able to run the app. All right, everything seems to be fine. Now I'm going to navigate to the scan.js file. So over here, scan.js, I'm going to hide the terminal. And now I'm going to import some of the components that we'll be using later. So I need image and I need touch opacity. And we need to import from react native camera need to import rn camera right and we also need to import from the constants as well so constants here it's going to be colors fonts sizes icons images all right Alright, so the first thing we're going to render is the camera view that covers the entire area. Alright, so let's work on that now. To do that, we need a view. We need a container view with some styling. Flex equals to 1. Background color equals to transparent. And within this view, within this container view, we are going to render the camera itself. Alright. And we are going to add a number of props over here. So we need to add the reference. It goes to reference. We need the style. It goes to flex one. We need capture audio, set it to false. The type is going to be the um, back camera. So RN camera dot constants dot type dot back. back yeah that one and the flash mode is going to be off so rn camera dot constants dot flash mode dot off all right so if you're working on android you need to add the android camera permission options prop so i'm going to do that here as well just in case you need it android camera permission options props so within this we are going to have title so permission to use camera and the message is going to be camera is required for barcode scanning so button positive equals to okay and button negative equals to cancel all right, save it. All right, so as you can see here, iOS will actually prompt a message to the user saying that Digital Wallet app would like to access the camera. Digital Wallet app needs camera to scan QR codes. So just simply allow it. And now you see a black screen. That's because on simulator, there is no camera module. Later on, when we test it on an actual device, which is my iPhone 8, you can see that the camera is being rendered properly. All right, so let's not worry about that for now and focus on the UI of the scan screen first. So now that we have rendered the camera module, next we are going to render the header section. All right, so to do that, within the RN camera component, we are going to render header, right? And we are going to create this function over here. Function, render header, and return something. So here I'm going to create a container view with some styling. Flex direction equals to row. Margin top equals to sizes dot padding times four. Padding horizontal 
it goes to sizes.padding times street. And within this view, we are going to have a touchable opacity. Give it some styling. With 45 align item center, justify content center. Since this is going to be a close button, so whenever I click on this close button, I'm going to navigate back to home. All right, so on press, navigation, I need to import it here, navigation, all right. So navigation dot navigate back to home. And within this touchable opacity, we are going to render um, an image component. All right, so image source equals to icons dot close and style equals to height 20 with 20 tint color colors dot white there you go so when whenever i click on this um, close button it will navigate me back to the home screen perfect all right so now i need another view for the label or the title all right so here view style equals to flex one align item center justify content center and within this view we're going to have the text component that says scan for payment give it some styling color equals to white and fonts will be body tree perfect and now we need to add an info button on the right so to do that we need another touchable opacity over here touchable opacity all right so give it some styling height 45 with 45 background color it's going to be green Border radius equals to 10. Align item center. Justify content center. And whenever I click on this button, I'm going to just console lock something on the terminal, right? So on press console lock info. All right, so within this touchable opacity, we need an image component. source is going to be icons.info style is going to be height 25 width 25 and tint color equals to white perfect all right now that the header section is completed next we'll be working on the payment method section all right so to do that we are going to create another render function over here so um, render payment methods and we're going to create this new function over here so function render payment methods and return something right so we are going to need a container view for this give it some styling position is going to be absolute bottom zero left zero right zero height is going to be 220 padding is going to be sizes dot padding times 3 border top left radius is going to be sizes dot radius border top right radius is going to be sizes dot radius as well background color is going to be white oh a bit of typo over here all right so within this view the first thing we're going to render is the text component which is basically the label another payment methods give it some styling the font is going to be h4 
all right now underneath this text component we are going to need to render two buttons so to do that we need a container view give it some styling flex one flex direction equals to row align items equals to flex start margin top equals to sizes dot padding times two and now within this view we are going to render a touch bolt opacity give it some styling flex direction equals to row and align item equals to center and whenever I click on this button I'm going to just console log something on the terminal alright so I'm gonna console log font number since the first button is going to be a font number button alright so font number and within this touchable opacity we need another view with some styling width equals to 40 height equals to 40 background color equals to colors dot light purple align items equals to center justify content equals to center border radius equals to 10 and within this view we are going to render the image component so source is going to be icons dot phone resize mode is going to be cover style is going to be height 25 width 25 and tint color equals to colors of purple save it and there you go our font icon is here and we also need to render the font number text component so we need a text component over here that says font number give it some styling margin left equals to sizes that padding and fonts is going to be body 4 All right, so underneath this touchable opacity, we need another touchable opacity for the second button, which is this one, the barcode button. So touchable opacity, give it some styling. Flex direction equals to row. Align item center margin left equals to sizes that padding times two and whenever i click on this barcode button i'm going to console lock um, barcode on the terminal all right so now within this touch opacity we need a view give it some styling width 40 height 40 background color is going to be colors dot light green align item center justify content center border radius is going to be 10 so within this view we are going to render the image component so the source oops the source is going to be icons icons dot bar cut and resize mode is going to be cover give it some styling as well so height 25 width 25 and tint color is going to be colors dot primary save it and there you go the button image is being rendered properly and same thing we are going to need a text component over here so text component barcode Give it some styling margin left equals to sizes that padding 
and the font is going to be fonts.body4. Perfect. All right, so now that the payment method section is completed, next we need to work on one more component, and that is the scan focus component. All right, so to do that, we need another function over here. So render scan focus, which is basically the frame, all right? Which is basically the frame. So I'm going to create this function over here right on top of the render payment methods. All right, so function render scan focus return. I'm going to return a view with some styling. Flex equals to one align item center justify content center and within this view we are going to need an image component source will be images dot focus resize mode is going to be stretch style is going to be width 200 height 300 all right i'm gonna push it up a little bit by setting the margin top to negative 55 percent perfect so before we test it on an actual device we are going to add one more prop called on barcode read all right without this prop we won't we wouldn't be able to read the barcode all right so i'm gonna add it over here so on bar code read equals to i'm gonna call this function the same name as well on bar code read and i'm going to create this function over here so function on bar code read um, the parameter is going to be the result and here what i'm going to do is that i'm going to console log uh, the result dot data on the terminal so which means whenever this camera module the react native camera module detects or read any sort of code it will be um, console log on the terminal all right so what i'm going to do next is that i'm going to open up the x code and try to run it on my iphone 8. all right now for the moment of truth let's see if it works i'm gonna head over to the scan screen okay so the app or ios will actually ask me um sorry will actually show me the message saying that digital wallet app would like to access the camera so i'm gonna just allow it perfect so the camera is actually working as you can see here the camera is actually working now i would like to know if the qr code is actually working so perfect you see whenever, whenever i try to scan this qr code the link or the content of the qr code or the content of the um, barcode will actually be console lock on the terminal perfect all right guys so we have just coded this clean looking digital wallet app based on the design created by happy tree Milarta on dribble.com the full source code for this project is available for free on byprogrammers.com and i have included the link in the description below so if you like the video if you think you have learned something new from this video, we'll be more than happy if you can just give it a thumbs up, comment, share it to your friends, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. I will see you guys in the next video. Happy coding. Peace.